alaykum qadrli talabalar. Bugun sizlar bilan birgalikda Mirzo Obek nomidagi O'zbekiston Milliy universiteti xorijiy filologiya fakulteti ingliz filologiyasi kafedrasi o'qituvchisi Ismoilova Nurxon Adhamjonovna. Bugun sizlar bilan birgalikda ikkinchi bosqich talabalari uchun maxsus amaliy tarjima ko'nikmalari fanidan tarjima metodlari mavzusida Video dars olib boramiz. Video darsimiz ingliz tilida bo'lganligi uchun keling uni ingliz tilida davom ettiramiz. So let's start our lesson. This plan outlines our lessons map. At first we will talk about lexical transformation in translation. Then the main causes of lexical transformation Then we will see it with examples. Then we will talk about varieties of lexical transformation with its examples. Okay. Um, at first, when we are uh, talking about translation, um, it means to transfer a form uh, from one language to another with different uh, letters. That translate and that copies the form by the letters of the target language or changes it by making transformations. Um, in order to transfer a form from one language to another, translator uses different translating methods or techniques, including lexical transformation. But when translator translates Uh, one form from source language to the target language um, may use mechanical copying or transfer to source language words and transliteration. Transcription is the copying the sound form of the source language word to the target language. For example, Mr. Wolf will be translated into Russian as Mr. Wolf into Uzbek also Mr. Wolf. But transliteration, copying the letters of the source language by the target language, letters of another system, but not the sound. For example, London will be translate, transliterated into Russian, London, or into Uzbek, the same. Lexical transformation is in which translator avoids direct or the first meaning of the word. Lexical transformations change the semantic core of translated word. They can be classified um, according its types. The main causes of lexical transformation difficulties in translation. The world view speakers of particular particular language differs from the world view of by speakers of another language for example glasses and achki in english the material from which the object is made is highlighted glass and in russian it's the function second eyes ochi Hot milk with skin on it, and its tra translation in Russian as "горячее молоко с пенкой". In English, hot milk is associated with skin, skin covering the body of fruit, body of fruit. But in Russian, the meaning of the word is based on the result of boiling. Foam, пенка, and appears when the milk boils. Hot milk with skin on it. Skin on it. Spinke. Despite the variations, the meaning in this kind of accusations doesn't change. The meaning will remain. Furthermore, the second reason of causing lexical transformation is the difference in the semantic volume of the words. There are no absolutely identical words in so, uh, source language, 
and target language. Most often their basic meaning coincides and the various lexical and semantic variants follow. This is due to the different functions of the word in the language, the different in use, different compatibility, but even the meaning of this English word can be wider than the corresponding Russian or Uzbek word. And its translation depends on the context. For instance, in an atomic war, women and children will be the first hostages. The word hostage, according to the dictionaries, has only one meaning. Someone who is taken as a prisoner by an enemy in order to force. Translation of this sentence. Первыми жертвами в атомной войне будут женщины и дети. However, once in this particular semantic environment, it acquires the meaning of victim, but not prisoner. And since we cannot use the word заложник in this context, we have to use the word victim in translation. The main cause of lexical transformation Third, the formation and development, development of the lexical system of the language leads to the formation of typical language usage methods associated with the perception of the world that is characteristic of given culture. It means that um, when you are copying the form of the word you have to copy, you have to pay attention to the culture, traditions, and its formation also. How this word is associated with culture and perception of this word. How affected to the people. For instance, trains going down. Parliament will rise next week. Trains going down, it means trains won. Parliament will rise next week. It means Parliament close its discussions next week. Now we will see the types of lexical transformation. They are specification or concretization, second generalization, then lexical expansion, lexical summarization, complete transformation, and antonymous translation. Now we'll talk about specification or concretization. Specification. In this method, translator substitutes words with a wider meaning with words of narrower meaning. It's also called hyponymic translation. When translating into Russian, verbs of movement and verbs of speech are specified. To be, have, get, take, give, make, say, come, and others. For example, Will you do the room? It means do means in the sentence, will you clean the room? Or will you tidy up the room? It's the specification of this sentence. And let's see in translation. Uh, for example, he is at school. Он учится в школе. He is in the army. Он служит в армии. So what? I said. Ну так что же? Спрашиваю я. The rain came in torrents. Sometimes contextual or verbal concretization is applied when it's necessary to complete a phrase, achieve greater expressiveness. You could hear him putting away his toilet articles. Toilet articles. And its translation. Было слышно, как он убирает свои 
мыльницы и щетки. This is a concretization. To sum up, concretization means specification, the placement of words or phrase with a broader meaning of words or phrase with a narrower meaning. Change a word or phrase that has a broader meaning to narrower meaning. For example, he is at school. Он учится в школе. Like this. Second time. Generalization. Generalization method translate a substitute words of narrower meaning to wider meaning. For example, people don't like to be stared at. People don't like to be stared at. Людям не нравится, когда на них смотрят. To be stared at. Due to the fact the words of English language are more abstract in nature than similar Russian words. When translating from English into Russian, generalization is used much less than concretization. For example, he showed us this old beat up Navajo blanket that he bought of some Indian. Он показал нам старые ветхие индейские одеяла, купленные у кого-то индейца. It's a broader meaning. Bought of some Indian blanket. The bird went up and circled again. Полил орел, поднялся выше и снова стал кружить над землей. To sum up. Generalization is the exact, exact opposite of concretization. Replacement of word or phrase that has narrow meaning to broader meaning. It's also called hyperonomic translation. For generalization can be caused by stylistic norms adopted in Russian language and literature. It's not accepted to indicate the exact height and weight of the characters in the works written in Russian. He was six feet three inches tall. Он был высокого роста. There is no any need to indicate exact numbers. It's not accepted to delimit the words such as foot and leg, hand and arm and others. When translating into Russian, strong arms, сильные руки, golden hands, золотые руки, waist watch, наручные часы. Next type is lexical expansion. It's also called lexical addition. In this type, when you are translating, you have to add extra vocabulary into target language. The compression characteristic of the English language leads to the addition of words when translating into Russian. For example, the new American Secretary of State has proposed a world conference on food supplies. Новый государственный секретарь США предложил созвать всемирную конференцию по вопросам the phrase has proposed a world conference drops the verb sazvat to call. When translating into Russian, we add this word according to the nouns of the Russian language. And the following example. Read the example and analyze. Or the problems of various industries. Problem различных отрасли промышленности. English word industry in the plural form industries, while the Russian noun промышленность is collective and is used only in singular. But if it's necessary to preserve the plural in the translation into Russian, 
then the translator cannot avoid entering the additional word otrasli. In English, the usage of combination of two or more words is a common meaning without changing them in widespread. Gun license, job offer, girl next door. Classical summarization is the exact opposite of concretization. As you remember, concretization means uh, replace a word or phrase that have um, that have broader meaning into narrower meaning. This is the opposition of concretization. For example, dropping the word word phrase which doesn't play significant role in conveying an idea in translation. The most traditional example is the use of period synonyms, often used in all writing styles of English language. In the Russian language, it doesn't occur. In translation, one of the synonyms is not repeated, and two words are replaced by one. Brave and fearless, probably, just an equitable treatment. Справедливое отношение. He was breathless and dead. Он был мертв. By violence and force. Насильственным путем. Normal and regular. Обычный. This technique is used not only in the translation of favorite synonyms, but there are other examples too. For instance, so I paid my check and all. Then I left the bar and went out. Я расплатился и пошел к автоматам. In this English sentence, the left the bar is redundant since a similar action is also assumed by the verb went out. Therefore, we need context. In the Russian translation, omission is appropriate and the sentence with its combined with its previous one. Specificity, for example, the use of numerals, names of measures and wages is more important in English than in Russian. Next step, complete transformation. Complete transformation is transformation of a single word and sometimes the whole sentence, but not only by elements but completely. This occurs quite often among the phrases of living spoken language. For example, how do you do? Здравствуйте. Never mind. Не беспокойтесь. Forget it. Не стоит говорить об этом. Shut up. Заткнись. Well done. Bravo. Молодец. Translation of forget it in the above list it was made using the method of semantic development. The literal translation of the action, forget about it, was changed to its reason. No one need to talk about it. Не стоит говорить об этом. And if you want to translate it as just forget it, then we get a replacement of the action with a consequence. There is nothing to talk, to talk about. Complete transformation is one of the universal means of translating phraseological units. When you are translating phraseological units, you have to completely change the words. For example, birds of the feather flock together. Rabak, rabaka, vidit is delika. And the same examples. Next, antonymous translation. It's a complex transformation when the source language construction is shifted to target language construction, whose components are all of opposite meanings. For example, positive ones will change to negative ones, negative ones will change to positive ones, for example. He didn't say anything. Он промолчал. I'm not kidding. Я вам серьезно говорю. Don't stop moving. Продолжайте движение. Antonymic translation is used quite often when translating 
proverbs and sayings. For example, a word spoken is past recalling. Slovenia Varabi Relative не поймаешь. Every cloud has silver silver lining. Нет худа без добра. That's all for today. And write down all types and methods of translation to your copybook and find out examples from fiction for each type 10 examples you have to find out. Finally, I'm here to help. Please, don't hesitate if you have any questions. My email address is given here nurhon.ismailova.94 at gmail.com Thank you for your attention. It's the boring news, Rahmat.